Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Bailey, and today we're going to be reading about sharks. Now sharks are some pretty interesting characters, and I bet you already know a few things about sharks, but I'm hoping that with today's book you might learn a few other things. I did when I was researching the book, and if you've followed along with any of the other books that I have here on YouTube about um, ocean life, such as octopus, seahorses, and jellyfish so far, you'll see where I talked about looking at the bold print words. And whenever you see a bold print word, you know that chances are that's going to be something pretty important to the book, kind of like pictures. It's just different text features in the book. So those bold print words, even if they're white like this over here, that means they're pretty important to the pages that we're reading or the book in general. So let's get started. Have you ever wondered what the biggest fish in the sea is? Why, it's the whale shark, of course. Yes, sharks are considered fish, and there are about 500 species of these awesome fish, aka sharks, swimming in our oceans. You see that aka right there? That means also known as. The word known has a silent K at the beginning. Whale sharks get their name because of their size, not because they're related to whales. They're truly sharks. And look how big this whale shark is in comparison to this diver. That's a pretty big shark. They're about the size of a large school bus. So that's really big for a fish, isn't it? While whale sharks are the largest fish in the ocean, they're not the most dangerous. In fact, they're considered to be gentle giants, and there's no record of them ever attacking a human. Do you see how this word ever is kind of slanted to the right? Whenever you see a word that looks a little bit different than the rest of the text, it means that you need to emphasize it. It's kind of an important word in that sentence. One would think that being so large, they would probably eat large sea life, but they're actually filter feeders and eat mostly microscopic plants and animals or plankton. They can't bite or chew. And it says right here, a filter feeder is an animal that processes water through its gills, filtering out the water and keeping the food particles, similar to straining pasta in a colander. So if this colander right here, that's this pink bowl thing with the holes in it, if that's the fish's gills, that means that the water coming through is going to come out through the holes. So the fish is going to push the water out and keep the food. And that's what being a filter feeder means. And I bet you, considering a whale shark is so gigantic, it probably has to eat a lot of plankton. That's teeny tiny plants and animals, considering how big it is, to keep it full and to keep it that big. The title of most dangerous shark in the sea belongs to the bull shark, though many think they're tied with the great white shark, followed closely by the tiger shark. The main reason bull sharks are considered the most dangerous is because they're found in more shallow coastal waters where there tend to be more people. Therefore, they have more of a chance to attack people. That being said, sharks don't usually attack people for no reason. It's more a case of mistaken identity or curiosity. And then right here, it says bull shark, third most aggressive shark behind the great white, which is number one, and the tiger shark, which is number two. It can live in both salt and fresh water. And the word aggressive means likely to attack. So what it's saying is that even though bull sharks are the third most aggressive, and you can kind of think of that as mean, they're really the third most aggressive or mean shark, they're still considered by a lot of scientists the most dangerous because they're found in shallow coastal waters where more people are. And they're also found in freshwater where there will be more people at too. 
Um, you're not going to find a lot of people out in the deep ocean, are you? So that is where a great white probably lives. Let's see. The great white shark is the most aggressive shark, but attacks less people than its cousin, the bull shark, because it lives in deeper ocean waters. Yep, so it lives in deeper ocean waters. That's the only reason it's not considered the most dangerous by many scientists. Some scientists do think it's the most dangerous. It just simply doesn't have the chance to attack people as often. Some scientists believe that even when great whites do attack people, it's probably because they have really poor eyesight and they think that people are sea lions or seals, their favorite snacks. So if a great white is underneath the water and they see something floating up here and say it's a person, the great white with its poor eyesight might think of that shadow that they see up here on the water. They might think that shadow is a sea lion or a seal and that's why they attack it. And if it happens to be a person, that's really the only reason it gets attacked. It doesn't go out looking for people. And you know, some sharks even eat other sharks. Sharks pretty much eat everything, everything from plankton, which is the small, tiny plant and animal life, all the way up to other sharks. So the ocean is kind of their buffet. One of the strangest looking sharks in the sea is the hammerhead shark. Hammerhead sharks get their name from their unusual shaped head, which looks a lot like a hammer. Because of the placement of their eyes on the sides of their head, they're able to see all around them. They can see above, below, behind, and in front of them at all times. Yeah, their eyes are on the sides of their head. So they can see behind, up, down, in front, all at the same time. And I've got some pictures of some hammers here. Now, while the hammerhead shark doesn't look exactly like the type of hammer that maybe you and I are used to using or seeing, it does look a lot like this kind of hammer, doesn't it? And it still looks a bit like this one. It's got something coming out on both sides. So I can totally see why the hammerhead shark was named a hammerhead shark. One thing that all sharks have in common is that they don't have bones. Instead, their skeleton is made of cartilage. Cartilage is the same thing our noses and ears are made of. This means they're bendable or flexible, which in turn means that sharks are very flexible. Flexible means they can bend and move. See, look at this. That shark is bent, almost like a curve. So it says cartilage is flexible material found in parts of your ears and nose. It's not hard like bone. So fill your nose and now fill your ears and move your ears with your fingers. You can move it, can't you? Whereas you're not able to move your bones. You can move your whole arm, but not the bone inside of it. So it's kind of cool that sharks are made of cartilage or have cartilage in the nut bones. Unlike humans, all sharks are born with teeth. In fact, many sharks have several rows of teeth, usually between five and 15 rows, but the bull shark has 50 rows of teeth. That's a lot of teeth to brush. So can you even imagine having 50 rows of teeth? So when one tooth and one row falls out, then another one just pushes up and comes through. So they always have teeth in their head. They're gonna need a lot more toothbrushes than that, don't you think? I think so. It says, did you know? Shark skin feels exactly like sandpaper because their skin is made up of tiny, sharp scales. Do you guys know what sandpaper feels like? Have you ever seen someone with a, um, uh, a square piece of paper and they're really scrubbing real hard a piece of wood, a piece of furniture or something, and they're trying to make it smooth or they're trying to get paint off of it? That's sandpaper that they're using. And it's so um, 
hard that it's actually getting paint off. Kind of, it almost kind of feels like a cat's tongue if you have a pet cat and you've ever felt its tongue lick you. Kind of hard like that. When you flip a shark over, they go into a trance-like state called tonic immobility. So a trance-like state means almost like they're asleep and they can't really move or focus or do anything. And then did you know the dwarf lantern shark is the smallest shark? It can fit in a person's hand. Can you imagine a full-grown shark being able to fit in your hand? That's pretty wild to think about. Now here are the parts of a shark. We have the eye. Okay, we can all recognize the eye. We have the mouth. We can all recognize a mouth. I think we would all be able to find the tail too. And then the whole body right here. What about the gills? That's these little things right here. And that's what helps a fish breathe. Over here it says gills helps a fish breathe. You know how humans have lungs and that's how we're able to breathe? Fish have gills. And then the dorsal fin, that is on the back or the top of the shark. A dorsal fin, it says, keeps a fish stable and helps it swim in a straight line. So that dorsal fin helps the whale from, or the shark from going back and forth and just tipping over. It keeps it stable. And then we have pectoral fins. They're on the sides of the shark. And that helps a shark steer different directions. So it helps it goes left or right. If it sees little Johnny, its friend over to the right, they can use those pectoral fins and steer over to see little Johnny. So guys, I hope you had fun learning about sharks. I hope you learned something about sharks. And until next time, have a great day.